Now we're at phase two for making a knitted knocker. This is going to cover the transition from the increasing through the purl rows down through the start of the decreasing rows to make the back of the knocker. So Phyllis, show us how it's done. Okay, well like I said in section one, you'd keep knitting, increasing, making that one stitch at the end of every row until it's as big as you want it to be. And for purposes of this, I think I'm up to, I don't know, 26 stitches. And so now I am going to purl two rows. Um, oh, let me interject here. What do you do if you've got 25 on one row, and, uh, on one needle, and 26 on another one? Don't sweat it. At some point on the decreases, you can just decrease an extra stitch on a round. There's, it, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. It does have to be beautiful, but one stitch on a row is not going to make any difference in the big scheme. So you're not going to rip out the whole I thing because not, you're going to I am not going to rip off. out the first, it, the whole thing. And you might see here that I have a little marker on this one. I, that's, that's just a personal preference. I like to know which is my starting row. So usually, I mean, pardon me, my starting needle. So usually when I get up to about 16, 17 stitches on a needle, I put some sort of a stitch marker on needle number one. And that's, that's just so that I typically know which is needle number one. So I am going to purl two rounds. So I'm almost done with my two purl rounds, and then we're going to start the decrease rounds. Now the decrease rounds, and if when you have the pattern, you'll see there's we do two different rows. On row one, we only decrease one stitch each needle, and on the next round, we in, we decrease two stitches each needle. And the reason for this is it is it. Um, makes the bottom of the knocker flatter so that it fits against because if you only decreased one stitch every round you'd have the other side of the knocker would look just like this which isn't what you want you want it to be flat so yes. that it fits against um, the skin so I'm gonna start round one and we're gonna do we're gonna knit to the end and we're gonna knit two together at the end of the round. Now, just just to, to comment, why did we do two rows of purling? Why didn't we just go straight into the decreasing? Because the purling gives it a nice ridge to make a nice, um, definite um, turning point where your decreases will start. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it it just makes a it makes a good turning ridge. If you just went right into the decreases, it, it just kind of looks I'm gonna say sloppy. So there I knit two together at the end of the row, at the end of the needle, and I'm gonna do that on each needle. And you know, one thing I forgot to mention, Barb, when I was doing the increase part, the top part of the knocker, is it's really important when you go from needle to needle that you that you pull that tight because you don't want um, gaps when you stuff it later on. Because if you if you don't pull tight and you have um, it's loose there, you're gonna have you're gonna have holes in your in the knocker and that doesn't look you, nice. You don't want that stuffing showing through. And I know that's something I had to learn because I uh, knitting on double pointed needles did not come naturally to me. And those of you that make socks and hats, it's probably easy squeezy and and you know. Uh, it, it doesn't even need to be mentioned, but those of us that were new to this, um, it is important to pull that yarn very tight in between needles. Okay, there I'm knitting two together. Now I'm going on to my third needle here. What, what I think is so cool about this pattern is once you start in one of the three areas, um, you don't even have to think about it anymore because every row is the same. Exactly. Um, until you get to this bottom section, then it's every other row is the same. But uh, you know, once you've got this pattern down, you can watch TV, you can visit with friends, uh, you can do just about anything while making these. And I, they're so portable. I just so throw portable. them in my purse. A, a baggie or anything can take enough to make yep. yarn to make a, a knitted knocker. And it makes for a great conversation piece yeah, too. Yeah, it's a great conversation stopper when people <laughs> originally ask you, what are you making? Oh, I'm making knockers. Okay, so. I just finished the first round where I decreased at the end of the round where I knit two together. So now I'm on the second round 
and I'm going to decrease at both ends. And How did you know you're on the second round? Well, I knew by my handy dandy little row marker or stitch marker. I just put one in because like I said earlier, I really like to know where needle number one is. Now we can show you later how if you don't have a marker like this, how you can tell when you're on your decreases. Um, right now I just know that there's that one knit row there. So I'm going to do um, a, a right slanted decrease at the right hand side which is called a slip slip knit. So for those of you who don't know how to do that, it's you slip the first stitch as if to knit, you slip the second stitch as if to knit, and then you put your left needle through it and knit around the back, and that's called a slip slip knit decrease. And I'll show you it again on needle number two. So now, I'm gonna now why didn't you just knit two together? Because then it slants to the right, and you don't want both of your decreases. You the, the decrease on the left side of the knocker slants to the right, so that's knit two together. And the decrease on the right side of the needle slants to the left, so that's why you do a slip slip knit. Does that make and sense? And that looks beautiful. Yep. No one makes better knockers than Phyllis. <laughs> so then we get to the end of the needle and I'm going to knit two together. Boy, you're fast at that. Knit two together. This is, you know, Barb says how portable it is. This is truly my mindless knitting. Um, I can knit in the dark. I can knit these in the dark when we're traveling. Okay, here I'm doing another slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, needle through the front, wrap around the back, knit. Knit to the end. Anyway, I, this is my, um, my conversational knitting because I can be I don't have to think too much when I'm making a knocker. I can just do it. Um, I'm going on a trip for a month. This is the only knitting I'm taking along because I don't want to have to worry about reading a pattern. Now the uh, the colors that that you knit, uh, we have found that the most request is for the pastel colors, the neutral colors. Um, we have uh, Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima comes in this. This is a close to a flesh tone. That's our most popular request. But when you get bored, what do you do, Phyllis? Oh, I put fur. Come on, Barb. Do you have some of my fur ones? I put fur in them. I've got some that are Christmas colored. Check that baby out. I've done some for Valentine's Day that are black and red with red fur. Um, what about the Christmas knocker? Yeah, so you know, when you get bored with knitting straight, you know, I call it, see like to me this, what I'm doing right now is boring, but um, they're all appreciated. However, yes, most people, if you can only have one set of knitted knockers, they're going to want to have these pastel ones, um, the flesh tone ones, but uh, uh, we do have the request for the bright and fun ones, so it, by all means, have fun with these. Exactly. So now I'm on round three. So this is another one where I'm only going to decrease on one end. So you see this slanted stitch? I don't know if we can zoom in on that. That's how you know that you did a decrease on that end. So now the next round isn't going to have a decrease on the right end. You can see that slanted stitch right there. That, I mean, that is a good way to know, but like I said, I, I put a marker, but that's... So every other row, you increase on the decrease, or excuse me, decrease on the first stitch, and every other row you don't. And on exactly. every row, you decrease at the end by knitting exactly. two together. So that becomes pretty easy. Exactly, it becomes pretty easy. So I'm gonna continue decreasing in this manner every other row doing um, two stitches, decreasing two on each needle in every other row one, and we'll show you, uh, the next step will be to show you how to finish the knockers off. Okay, that finishes step two. Step two. Thank you, Phyllis.